Well, hey there, hobby homesteaders. Welcome back to Peaks Peak. I'm Lucas. And I'm Caden. And we are sharing our hobbies here on 38 acres in eastern Kentucky. And we're back up in the wood yard today. And Caden is going to mill a couple of logs. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the whole circuit of the wood yard. I'm going to place log on the mill. We'll mill it down. We'll throw our slabs on the slab table. We'll cut those slabs into firewood. We'll run the firewood through the log splitter. We'll put those in the firewood totes and then whatever scraps we have left over, we'll put in the wood chipper and chip those up and kind of show the whole process. And we, we want to try to get two logs milled today. What we've been doing is building up our stock of lumber so that we can finish out this mill shed. And then I need you guys' input. The next thing I need to do is get shelter over my new split fire log splitter. Right now, I'm just putting a tarp over it when we go down to the house. Same thing with the Mech Max. I would like to have a permanent roof over it, kind of like we did the mill shed. I was talking to my buddy Brock over at Rock Hill Farms, and he suggested that I just extend the mill shed and put them underneath that. And that's, that's a possibility, but it was not what I was picturing. And I also like to be able to drive around the mill shed with the side by side and, and that kind of thing. I was picturing different stations. So I would have like, you know, my log splitting station over there with a separate little shed for the splitter to be under. And I could build it big enough to put the wood chipper under that too. And then maybe a, a lumber building somewhere in here where I stack lumber to dry. I'm still kind of up in the air on those things. And I've got a little bit of time because I'm gonna put the sides on this building before I move to building the next one. So I'll just use a tarp for now, but leave your opinions down in the comments. That way I can get some ideas and be thinking about what we're gonna do. You ready to put a log on the mill and get busy? Yeah. All right, what are we gonna do after we get done milling today? Probably like ride dirt bikes if it's not raining. Yeah, we could still ride in the rain. Track's muddy though, isn't it? Yeah, it's man, we've had so much rain here. I don't know about you guys, but we've been getting rain like every other day, if not every day. Um, and we have a dog on the floor. Yeah, she's having a good time. Say hi, Maple. Oh. How you doing, Maple? Can you say hi to everybody? Oh. I think Maple likes to come up here to the wood yard with us and hang out. But I'm gonna tell you what, it wears her out. <laughs> we take her down in the afternoon and she sleeps and snores <laughs> after a day up here with us. And she also ha gets a lot of ticks, so I have to take them off. Yeah, you gotta, gotta check her for ticks and, because we got a lot of ticks up here. Look at that. Mm. You got Lightning McQueen over here. <laughs> ka chow, ka chow. Ka -chow. Ka -chow. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get to work. Try again. You don't have to push that hard, buddy. You just let it cut. I figured out when I took over the mill head myself that you did have to push pretty hard. So I started figuring out that my blade was dull. It's about time to change it. 
I decided to go ahead and try to complete this one cut and you can see I started to get steam off of the blade so it was having to work way too hard to cut this pine. Alright guys, well I think it is time to change the blade. I'm getting more heat on the blade than I us usually get and seeing some steam come off of the water that uh, we're using. Um, and I'm just having to apply more pressure than I normally have to apply. So I'm kind of new to all this, so I'm not real sure, you know, how to gauge that. But uh, one of the ways we're going to find out is by just replacing it and seeing how much better it does and kind of go from there. Take the tension off of this and then we're going to run down the house, get another blade. You gotta kinda take your time with this process. I got everything all set, started tightening the blade down and realized I didn't have it in this blade guide here. It came out when I was moving other stuff around. So anyway, our belt uh, still good and tight. Now, I always check my run out by spinning it the direction it's gonna spin to cut, but then I will fire it up and run it for just a second or two and then kick it off and check the blade again to make sure it didn't change with it running up at full speed. All right, our tooth run out looks exactly the same. I think we are ready to go. Now let's see what kind of difference that makes in our cutting because it was getting pretty hard to push and that's why Caden bailed on me on that first cut. So if it's better, maybe I can talk him into coming back and cutting some more. Definitely the blade. All right, put these in. They'll uh, block the sound. Should be good to go now. Push it on down. That's good. Now let me get the uh, slab off of there. Look at it. That's probably pretty good. Just cut the end off of that and salvage a little bit of lumber out of that. You know, I can get probably a nice four foot board out of that. Get us another about an inch. How we looking? All right, cut us another.
we'll be able to turn into pieces of siding. They'll just be shorter pieces. I set this log on here backwards to what I intended because I've been told several times, start from the small end because that's the biggest cant you're gonna get and makes perfect sense to me. But I didn't think of it before I loaded it. And this was such a heavy log that I really just was not wanting to try to pick it back up again and, and reset it. <laughs> so here we are. But we'll get there. I'm using that three quarter inch scale, which leaves me with like 11 16 inch thick siding boards. And that's, that's what I decided to go with. So that's all working out great. But I wanted to share one thing about this mill and that's the head adjustment. When I first put this mill together in the first 10 logs that I milled, this adjustment was squeaky and a little bit hard to turn. And I decided the other day when it was raining that I was gonna come up here and figure out what was causing that and make it work better. So I took this plate off. I drilled the roll pin out of this handle to take the handle off and I actually ordered some new roll pin so I can put it back. But right now I got a cotter pin in there so it's a little loose. You take this off and there's two jam nuts behind here. You can take those loose and you can actually take this assembly apart and there's a bearing inside there. And that bearing was probably just sprayed with some liquid lubricant or something because it was pretty well dry. So I packed it with grease, but I don't think that's where the squeak was coming from because I got it all put back together and it still squeaked. So I unhooked the cables for the head and I took this sliding bar. Let me go around here where you can see it. I let the tension off, took these cables off and unthreaded this bar out of there. And there's a brass um, nut inside there that when you crank the handle, it's just threading in and out of that brass nut. And that was dry, had no grease on it. So I greased that up and I, I squirted grease back in there. I greased up this arm, put it all back together. And not only is it quiet, but it is really, really nice and easy to crank. So if you get one of these mills and you run into that, that's the fix for that. I like to share the good and the bad. That's something that I run into that needed addressed and we got it fixed. We're good to go now. Guys, several things on this go round. One being new blade is amazing. <laughs> so definitely it was time for that. Probably milled eight or 10 logs on that blade. I'm gonna try to keep track this time. Um, so there's one, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I could definitely tell it was getting harder to push and I assumed it was the blade. The new blade made a huge difference and I got a better quality of wood this last go around. When I cut my stack of two befores the last time, I noticed there was a lot of shredded edges. And while I still have some of that, this is a lot smoother cuts than what I had the last time. So I have, I got 17 siding boards out of that log. And then I got a two by six and a two by four, all over 10 foot long. A lot of yield out of that log, that was nice. Two of the siding boards are shorter boards. They'll be like four and six foot long. I feel like we did pretty good with that one. I think next I'm gonna set just whichever log is next in line on here. And I think I'm gonna make two by fours out of it. And that way we'll have a nice stack of framing lumber ready to put our purlins and stuff on here. Gertz.
I did it again. <laughs> Get those two before so that we'll have girt material. And then we can start deciding how we want to side this out, how much of it we want to cover and all that. Once I get that finished, I'll see how much siding I have left over and framing lumber. And we'll start making our plans for the shed for the splitter and the wood chipper. And don't forget to leave me your, your ideas of what I might ought to do with that and what style. Quick and easy and sufficient. I've always kind of lived by the good enough is good enough um, motto and you know not everybody's wired that way but i like to do lots of different things so i i want it to be good enough but then i want to be done and move on to the next thing so that's kind of how i operate so keep that in mind when you make your suggestions i think i'll go ahead and cut up my slabs real quick and i'm gonna let caden run the splitter he kind of bailed on me on the sawmill i'll just i've got the little saw here i'll just go ahead and use the little saw for this might as well i'll wait until i direct you on the tractor okay but i, I will direct you and let you do it Caden, fire up the tractor. Okay. All right. There, perfect. Come on in. Come on in. Good job. You're doing good. Come on. You can pick them up and tilt it back now. Watch the. Okay, now pull over there by the table. We'll load it up. Turn the throttle down. I always turn the throttle down before I shut it off. Come load them up. All right. Whew. You sound like me this morning after a little Taco Bell. <laughs> I love you, bud. So I let Caden operate the splitter there for just a little bit. And then he seemed like he was done with it. And I said, are you afraid of it? And he said, well, a little bit because it's so much faster. You don't have as much time to think. That's pretty smart that you were willing to just not do it when you're not comfortable with it. I do like the thing. It's pretty awesome. All right, buddy. Well, you want to throw another log on? We'll do one more, okay? Can we go ride dirt bikes? Well, we'll ride dirt bikes later, okay? After sparkle fingers. Oh, you want to do sparklers? All right. Man, I'm telling you what, the track is going to be muddy. Probably. Yeah. Now, guys, listen. You got to be super careful when you're letting a younger guy run equipment like this. But, man... If more dads would get out and do stuff with their kids and let them be exposed to a little bit of equipment and doing things like this, that they would come into adult life being a little more ready to do some of this stuff on their own and they'd be a whole lot safer about it. Yeah, so we try to take our time and only be smart about what I let him do, but I do, I try not to just shield him from everything. No, tilt her back. There you go. Okay, you got it. Now, straighten your wheel out. Don't turn around right there. All right, now.
now stop for a minute. Okay, so when you've got a heavy load in your bucket like this, the tractor could tip over very easily. So you always want to run with it way low to the ground, almost dragging the ground. That keeps it close to the ground so you won't tip over sideways. And then you always go slower when you've got the weight in there because the tractor can teeter-totter around on you, okay? Watch where you're going. Don't hit my splitter. I remembered something. I'm gonna drop this log, spin it around because I want the small end up next to the mill head. Well guys, we just put in a few hours up here in the wood yard and you know how many boards we ended up with? No. We've got 40 siding boards, 20 two by fours and one two by six out of five logs. I think that's gonna be real close to enough to do what we wanna do for siding on this. Now I haven't ca tried to calculate how much we need so I'm not too worried about it. I'm gonna start building and then if we run out, I'll mill some more. But yeah, we've got half of our pine logs left. So we've got half of them milled up. And I think that's enough that this week I'm gonna shift into build mode again. What do you think? I'm pretty excited do about it. Do it. All right. Well, listen, Lightning, what are we gonna do now? My dirt bike. All right, well, he's been on me. So we're gonna go get the dirt bikes out and do a little bit of riding. So that's gonna be it for today. I hope you enjoyed spending some time with us in the wood yard today. Until next time, get outside and enjoy God's creation. It's beautiful out here. Y'all have a good day. Peace. Mm -hmm.